In today's video, I'm gonna do a VR to Simon and it's the latest hashtag that he's created all about tarot. And I'm really, really excited to share my responses to this hashtag, I think it's fantastic. It's been a while since I've done a hashtag and I really, really miss doing them because they're so much fun. So if you would love to talk about tarot and get involved, I would love to have you. Do stick around, get yourself a nice drink, settle back, relax and enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all well and safe, looking after yourselves. So in today's video, I'm really excited to try out this tag from Simon at the Hermit's Cave. It's a really exciting tag, all about tarot, and I'm just gonna get straight on into it and share some decks with you as well. Hi everyone, so I'm gonna get started with the prompts, and the first prompt is your first deck and how you encountered it. So my first deck was this. This is the original Rider Waite Tarot deck. It was this specific deck, but it wasn't this actual deck because I unfortunately lost it. However, this is a replacement for this deck. So this is, I believe, what most people consider to be the most garish of the tarot decks. It's got these blue backs, and then quite yellow tones. I haven't flipped this deck the right way around, so I'm sorry there are some upside down cards, but you all know what the Rider Waite Smith looks like. So it's just a case of seeing the colors really, I think. And I loved this deck when I first got it. I was 17 and the first thing that really prompted me to get into tarot was witchcraft because I started my witchcraft path when I was 11 and after you know seeing a few films and then sort of realizing that something that I've felt inside me for my entire life this magic this whimsy you know I would always as a child spend time in nature and spending time connecting to spirits and talking to imaginary friends and making potions and using my fingers and like feeling the energy through my fingers and pointing and making magic that way like and I never realized that actually what I was doing it could possibly be real that sort of opened up a door for me and then I came to tarot quite late because I think my parents didn't want to get me a deck I don't know if I really actually asked them and although they knew I was interested in witchcraft and I was practicing magic throughout my teens I kept everything kind of hidden away really just so I wouldn't ruffle feathers because I know that it wasn't exactly what my parents wanted me to be spending my time on so back then anyway so I just sort of kept it to myself but I'd read about tarot in books and then it was when I was 17 I was in a charity shop and I found an old tarot book and I still can't really remember which tarot book it was, but I have a few that I think it could have been, and I've talked about that in previous videos. But I read this book cover to cover really quickly and just decided, right, this is it. I'm gonna go buy myself my own deck now. So I just learned the meanings like that. But one thing I would say is that I didn't spend enough time doing readings because I felt insecure about doing readings so I just kept it to myself and I would play with it and read with it myself and not really involve anyone else which I think was a mistake because I think if I had read for others sooner it would have helped me to progress quicker but you live it and learn it and you know what I wouldn't have it any other way because I learnt the tarot system and then sort of as I built confidence started to practice my reading on my own for a very very long time and yeah, this deck was really my only deck for a long time. It's only in like the last few years I've started to sort of expand my collection. And I did have some time away from the tarot as well for some time in my life when I was busy working in London and life was fairly challenging and I had a lot of mental health ups and downs. And so, you know, this was kind of on the wayside. Then, you know, came back to it. I actually really, really quite like this deck. So I love the images as soon as I saw them. I know some people don't but I fell in love with these images and I felt like they just spoke to a part of my soul. I felt like I'd seen them before. They felt really resonant. I know I'd seen tarot in films like now and then before and I'm sure some other films as well. Like I think there's another film I can't quite remember. I knew I'd seen it and now and then was probably the film out of those that I saw first when I was younger. I don't know how, but I just felt like I knew these images. The colours are really bright and kind of garish and the line work is thick and not brilliant but I still really like this. I mean look actually the quality of the magician like when you compare it to other decks is just 
quite funny. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I love this deck. I love what it represents. I love what it taught me. It taught me how to read tarot. So for that, I'm forever grateful to this deck. So my last tarot deck that I purchased for my own money is the Pagan Otherworlds. And I've just actually been working with this, so it's out. I adore this deck and it took me so long to get it, but I know it means so much to me. It is a really special deck and I didn't really know if I believed in soul decks or anything, but I actually think other than the Rider Waite Smith and a couple of others that artistically I really enjoy, I think this is the soul deck and I don't really have any desire to find any other deck beyond this. There's something about the images that just speak to me. They do have these moon cards throughout if you are not familiar with this deck. I did turn all the cards the right way around, yay! So you can see it in all its glory, but there's just something about the images that just resonates with me so powerfully. I just find the illustrations so beautiful and I don't know, I just feel like I get the story so well when I ask questions and pull cards and it reads just so beautifully. The cardstock is gorgeous. I don't think my tastes have really changed. I have a diverse, eclectic, taste in decks like I really enjoy decks like this that are realism and almost realistic in their depictions. I like a lot of different types of art. My mum was an art teacher so that's something I love. I like a lot of pre-Raphaelite art personally but obviously comparing the Rider Waite Smith it's very different and even though it's very different I still love it. So I would probably say this is more my aesthetic though than, than this, even though I still love Pixie's artwork. I will always think of the Rider Waite Smith as a soul deck, not particularly this version, but the Centennial is definitely up there. So that's definitely one that I would always consider to be a soul deck because of where it you know, came from. But yeah, this is definitely where I feel all my energy is right now in terms of decks and I just don't want to work with any other deck. I did write an Instagram post about my feelings around soul decks because I wasn't even sure if I really believed in it, but this is just something that just resonates for me so strongly and I feel like it made me weep the moment I opened it. And I just felt this like energy and these goosebumps all over my arms. It was just incredible. Like I've never had an experience with a deck like that before. Exactly. So next question is why tarot? I do love other forms of divination. I love scrying, I like using a pendulum, but I feel like you get more detailed answers with the tarot and I also enjoy oracles as well, but they are a little bit more general, I think, like you can get really specific answers with the tarot. I love the art as well, like I took art at GCSE and A-level, my mum's an art teacher, so art was something I was considering as my career, like art is important to me, so it kind of makes sense in my head why I would collect these beautiful forms of art that are esoteric and occult in nature and have these meanings to them. I used to love playing cards as well when I was little, and to be honest with you, I would play with them and try to divine with them when I was younger and I'd play cards with my parents. So, you know, I never really established a system for myself because I felt like I was just playing at the time, but. I did actually use them to predict a few things and I felt like I was accurate, but I was quite little at the time. I didn't, you know, invest enough time in that and that is still something that I want to pursue and to learn a specific tradition of. This deck is just like everything I've ever wanted and more in a deck and even though it's pippish, I think Simon spoke about this as well recently, that they're scenic pips and there's so much symbolism within the images that it doesn't seem to matter that they're scenic and you know you do get so much from it but it's not restrictive in the way that like a standard RWS system is. So tarot pet peeves, I never used to think cardstock and card size was a pet peeve for me but I have noticed that of my bigger decks I tend not to use them so much if they're very very thick cardstock or if they're really, really hard to shuffle. I don't mind thin cardstock, but they do get kind of battered, which I don't love. I really don't like big, obnoxious borders. I don't mind these, I quite like these because they beautifully frame the art, and I feel like there is value in a deck like this having a border. So there is quite a lot of decks that get away with borders, I think, but when you shove a really obnoxious blue border onto a beautiful deck and make the cards so extremely huge, it just kind of ruins it. I also kind of prefer not to have huge amounts of text on the cards themselves. So I like to have 
obviously the numbers and I like to have the name of the card because I think there's several cards you could just get confused. And there are some decks as well where they switch up things, the Astara Tarot for instance, and it's really not clear on each of the cards actually what suit it is sometimes because the art is so different between the suits and you can just get lost in it, you kind of need the guidebook to remind you like which suit goes with which or you kind of need to like really study the art and remember like the artist style to understand which suit is which. I feel like in decks like this, the Guardian Angel Tarot by Dorian Virtue, which I recently picked up from eBay as a secondhand purchase, I feel like this is different and even though it's a tarot, I would use this as a oracle. I think Simon also said that. There's quite a lot of people that will do that with anything that is another system. I think that's what Simon was saying. I would use this more as an oracle though. I think also because it's Adoring Virtue and I feel like a lot of these decks, they have positive spins. The reason I've started collecting some of these older decks with Doreen's name on them is because the ones that I did have before she became a born again Christian were very, very accurate and predictive. And I heard other people saying that as well about some of her other decks and I felt like in actual reading settings these are brilliant decks to have. So readings for clients, readings for friends, family and it's often that I will pull out a Dorian Virtue Angel deck alongside a reading for a clarification card for someone else because I feel like they're really really comforting images and they really really support with a very productive message that you know supports the reading and helps to provide the reader either some more context or some more guidance on like next steps and things that they can do so I really do think that that is something I will accept in a deck like this you know writing on a card. I'm sure that there's other pet peeves of mine that I can't quite remember. I don't like it when tarot cards like stick together when you first get them. I think that's most of like the newer kind of gilded decks do that. But at the same time, I do like gilded decks. I think they're very pretty. Although having said that, this is probably my dream deck and it's not gilded. I love the linen finish of this. This is like my dream deck material it's like it's a linen finish and yeah I don't know cardstock and numbers etc like I mean Lisa Papez's videos on cardstock etc is just incredible I wouldn't be able to tell what what this is or whether it has a core of anything or I just know what feels good in my hands and yeah this is definitely it so favourite tarot spread, to be honest, when I'm reading for other people and for myself, most of the time I will just free read. So I will shuffle, I will let cards fall out where they do, or if I feel there's a moment where I need to stop and pull a card, I do, and I know exactly where to pull it from. I have also used the waiting till my fingers tingle thing, I've used that for a very, very long time in my practice. So spreading out the cards and then, you know, feeling the energy from the cards and knowing which ones, but I found that that just took way too long after a while when I was reading with lots of decks and bigger readings and such. I also like, you know, a daily spread sort of what's the energy, what are the challenges and what's the advice, that kind of thing. I love those spreads, like any three card spreads like that. Energy of the day, situation that will come up, something I need to focus on, some advice for the day, anything that might challenge, those kinds of prompts. I like to do that but again like I've written these all down in my journals, but I don't go, oh, I'm gonna do the energy challenge advice spread today. I just ask the cards. So whatever I feel I need to ask in that day, like if I'm particularly anxious, I will just ask questions about what I'm anxious about. Or if I don't know why, I'll ask questions to sort of like figure out how. So I do tend to free read quite a lot. And whilst I, of course I know all the meanings of the cards, I do like to intuitively interpret. So sometimes a card, it will have a very nuanced meaning that will come out of that specific reading because the energy I get from the person who I'm reading for, or because the cards it's next to, of course, because that of course changes the context of it. So it's a very, very fluid kind of way that I like to read. Read. I've always used jumping cards. Obviously, if half the deck falls out, I tend to ask Spirit to give me some more cards. But you know, it's so funny quite often if, say, four or five cards fall out and I'm like, oh, I don't want to journal about four cards today. You know, give me another answer, Spirit. When I reshuffle, a couple of the cards that fell out in the original pile will come out again. That happens so frequently. And that for me, again, is just like fantastic clarification. I love that. So just to give you an idea, because I did say I do tend to be quite fluid and intuitive with my reading and just free read, what I tend to do is shuffle this way, because I'm terrible at bridge shuffling, and then what I'll do is either they'll fall out or I'll pull a card. Usually if I'm working with someone, I'll use a significator card. Potentially I might get them to pull a significator card. I usually get them to shuffle the deck. I 
cleanse myself and my deck and ground and center. I shuffle the deck, then I get them to shuffle the deck. I sort of have a moment where we ground together and we sort of tap into the energy. And then that person, if a card falls out in a shuffle and it's a court card, I tend to assume that is a significator card, unless they've already picked a significator card, which sometimes we do anyway. If it's reading that I think will benefit from that, then I do that. So what I tend to do is talk to the person about the questions that they have, what they want to find out, and depending on how many issues, I will do a line of three or four cards but this is generally like one aspect of the question they're talking about and then if there's another aspect of the question that they're talking about that will go below and then it moves through like that so it's very much like a fluid tarot reading usually I would separate them out so you can see all the cards but then you can look at the relationships between all of the cards that have been pulled and you can see you know how many of each suit that you have and the patterns that are evolving I haven't actually read with this deck with anyone else because it's such a new deck for me and I actually I'm not sure if I want to because it is a personal deck for me this tends to be the deck that I do this for for myself at the moment and I'm loving it and then I will pull some clarification cards. Sometimes I do a significant card for me if I feel like I need to. And of course, if you are following me on Instagram, you'll know that I do create new and full moon tarot spreads. And I look into what the planets are doing during that lunation and I create the tarot spreads around what is happening in the sky. So if you have a conjunction to Saturn, which we did just recently for the Aquarius super full moon, you know, that is playing a and then an aspect from Saturn and the Moon to Uranus and Taurus so you know it really really colours how I will create a spread and then that spread is obviously useful for that time but I still feel like the questions are really really great for shadow work and I think that they can be used over and over again whenever we have similar aspects coming up or when similar planets are in play and I feel as well recently when I did my spread which I shared on Instagram I used this deck for that and I actually answered the tarot spread prompts as journal questions first as journal prompts and then I pull cards and it had so much nuance and clarity to it and I think you can but definitely use both. So I publish those on my Instagram at the moment, but I also am sharing a PDF of them on my Patreon along with a full forecast for the new and full moon, including ritual ideas, things that you can do in your practice for the lunation, as well as herbs and crystal recommendations to use in your practice. So that's something I'm offering on the first tier and when I create more tiers, it will be on all tiers, but at the moment it's on the first tier. There are lots of other things I want to create as well, it's just timing, so. But yeah, that tends to be how I read um, the spreads that I like to read. I'm gonna share this deck with you now because it's not the last Oracle deck that I got, but it's an Oracle deck I really, really like. This is The Woodland Wardens by Jessica Rue and it's just stunning. I think it's really gorgeous for getting like a herbal recommendation for the moment as well as like animal spirit recommendation and it's just gorgeous, I love it. So your preferred tarot system, of course it's the Rider Waite Smith. I don't think I really need to go into that too much because I've said it a lot on my channel before. The Rider Waite Smith is always going to be mine because it's the system that I first came to and I love the art. I do have a Thoth deck and I have used it for a few readings but it's not the deck that I go to, you know, I think it's beautiful though. I had to have a copy of it because it's absolutely stunning. I mean, Lady Frida Harris's artwork is just incredible. So yeah, I, I do love it and I like having it in my collection, but I'm a Rider Waite Smith girl through and through. So tarot rituals, sometimes I have a pot of tea like I do here. I like to read tarot and oracle in the evening at bedtime sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, after the kids are in bed. And that is kind of a little ritual for me in itself. I light a candle always. I have this one over here. So I, I love this burner. I tend to have either soy wax or oil in the top and I have herbs and some essential oils that I'm working with currently. And sometimes I dress a little tea light candle. Sometimes I have a bigger candle. I don't tend to do readings in here. I tend to do them in my bedroom. And sometimes I'll have incense on a burner like this or I'll have a stick incense. My routine is quite simple. Sometimes I'll use a pendulum alongside. This is actually a necklace of mine. It's like a pendant for a deity I work with and I found it to be very, very accurate in 
its predictions, so it works for me, even though it's not a typical pendulum. I do have some other pendulums elsewhere, but I prefer to use that, to be honest, because it feels connected for me to one of the deities I work with. I have a scrying ball as well, which I like to use, and I have this one back here, which I have used as well in the past. This one is much better to use. However, this needs more like a nighttime thing. For tarot, I don't always really use a scrying ball or anything. I do like to use Oracle alongside Tarot. I have a table in my bedroom with the decks I'm currently using and these decks, they live there at the moment. And I sometimes pull cards in the morning. It tends to be when I'm getting ready or throughout the day, if I feel like I need to, I will go up and pull some Tarot. But it tends to be, again, quite fluid and just as I feel I need to really. But I do like to have incense and candles. It tends to be more at night that I read as well, especially larger spreads and more detailed spreads, like specific questions, unless it's about the day or something that I'm dealing with in that moment. So how do you use tarot introspection or divination, etc.? I think I've talked about this on my channel before. I do believe in divination and I do use it to divine, but I also use it as a personal reflection tool and introspective tool and a healing tool, a shadow work tool. I use it for all of those elements. So yeah, definitely think of it in an archetypal way as well. I love all the different creative ways that are possible with tarot. I just love it so much. And like I said earlier, it's the art as well. I think that you can definitely tap into all elements of the tarot system. Some people prefer to work one way and other people prefer to work another way. But yeah, for me, I do definitely divine using the tarot and sometimes cards will come up in my dreams as well so I have quite active dreams and I keep a dream journal I, I do dream work and lucid dreaming and astral travel and such and so that is something that's a big part of my practice I do have some clairvoyance some clairaudience and I do experience visions from time to time premonitory dreams downloads like I get pictures a lot of pictures sometimes noises and like moving pictures when I'm in the hypnagogic state as well so yeah I do see things with my third eye. So I'm just gonna move these to one side for the moment because the next question is, what is your significator card? And personally, for me, the court card that most resonates is the Queen of Cups. For a while it was the Queen of Wands because I am a Leo Sun. However, I am a Scorpio Ascendant and a Cancer Moon. So I feel like there's also other areas of my chart that have a lot of water. My Mercury is also in Cancer. And so I do feel like there are multiple areas of water in my chart and it feels very, very specific. I mean, I do personally feel like I can see myself in all of the court cards and elements of my character in, you know, all of the queens, for instance, and the pages specifically because I am quite young at heart. And, you know, when I rush into decisions, I see myself in, like, the Knight of Swords, for instance. Like, I definitely definitely see myself in all of the court cards but the one that most resonates for me has always been the queen of cups as i mentioned before i definitely tap into aspects of psychic knowing and intuition and clairvoyance and clairaudience and clairsentience and all of the clairs really i definitely have experienced so i feel that they are relevant there is a side of me i feel resonates with the page of cups as well because the page of cups is very creative and again you like young at heart and adventurous and kind of thinks outside the box and creates outside the box I should say or feels outside the box and they're quite like unique and one of a kind and that's definitely me I mean not necessarily always in a good way I often feel like I'm misunderstood so misunderstood in many circles and like I don't fit in and I feel like the page of cups feels like that for me and I again I feel like I'm always getting things wrong and having to learn and improve and emotional intelligence is a big big thing that I feel like I've always been able to understand my own emotions and communicate them but they aren't always understood by people and I think I always reflect that back on myself and make that my problem but yeah that is I think one of the traits of the water suit that we definitely just sort of feel a lot and sort of reflect it back on ourselves and feel it inside ourselves and so yeah definitely cups ones because the leo sun and being extremely passionate being extremely creative being extremely you know fiery in my personality i definitely am so all of these resonate for me if i had to pick one it would probably be the queen of cups because i do feel that 
you know, that is the kind of dominant expression within who I am and how I am and how I live. In the Myers-Briggs, I believe I am an INFJ, which corresponds to the Queen of Cups from what I have discovered and read about. So I think it's really, really interesting, but the Myers-Briggs doesn't really come into any kind of significance when it comes to me choosing this. I would have chosen this anyway, I think, were it not for that, but it's just an interesting note to make, I think. My most expensive tarot acquisition. Editing Emily here, and I've just realized that these are all wrong. My most expensive tarot acquisition was actually The Mysteries of the Black Madonna Tarot Deck by Hetty Ann Grobler. So I got that wrong. Along with the guidebook, it might be The Pagan of the Worlds. It also might be The Victorian Romantic. And it also could be, I think it actually is, The Bone Stone and Earth Flesh. I picked this up when it was first listed on the Etsy. I didn't back it on the Kickstarter. And then it took a very, very long time to complete. Some of you will probably remember. And so I was just waiting and I was signed up and I knew that I wanted to get it after seeing the artwork and such. So I just picked it up. I bagged as soon as it was on the creator's website or Etsy. I can't remember actually. Was it Etsy? I'm not sure. But it's Avalon Cameron anyway, who of course is here on YouTube, a fantastic channel, and Anatorian, whose other decks are also incredibly beautiful, and there's a few of them still on my list. This deck, it was so highly desirable at the time, and I remember it was just kind of the object of obsession for a lot of people, and you know, very, very lovely to have it. And I did find that I bonded quite well with this deck. I felt like it spoke to me and I just love the colours in it. The style of artwork is absolutely breathtaking. It just aligned in so many, so many ways and the spreads looked beautiful. So yeah, I really, really love this deck. So of course I talked about loving the colours but I also, when I saw that the creator made available the bones of the Bonestone and Earth Flesh, which was sort of the black and white sketches, I was very intrigued by that, but I have not picked it up because, again, it's a huge cost. And then, so the Tower of the Abyss, not created by Avalon Cameron, but the artwork by Anna Turian, and I believe the deck is created by Anna Turian as well. When that deck became available, it was very much on my list, but again, other decks just came into my collection and the Tower of the Abyss has not yet come into my collection but it is one that I would like to work with at some point so it is definitely on my list very very beautiful deck mass market and I feel that yeah something about this art I think it would be beautiful to work with it in a tonal way as well in that monochromatic way I just love this oh my gosh so beautiful I really love this deck and the colour is just well it's just exquisite isn't it I mean yeah I love it so I think probably this one was probably the most expensive I think it was about 100 along with the shipping maybe it was 90 I can't remember you know but this is probably up there as one of the most expensive but definitely worth it very very beautiful collector's piece for sure unicorn deck a deck that's hard to find. I don't think any of the decks I have are really that hard to find. You know, I would love to have a Blushing Fool. I'd love to have a Hoi Polloi. I would love to have just any of the older blue boxes. One of those would be wonderful. Oh, I do have, I do have this replica of the 1909, this facsimile, and this is stunning. Oh my gosh. So this is the art restoration deck, the 1909 art restoration deck. This deck may have been Game Crafter, I think, though I'm not sure it's available anymore. It comes with these beautiful art cards, so you get several cards here in black and white, which is lovely. That's just the cover, really. And then you get this one, which I believe is all of the cards merged together, which is very interesting. So yeah, just a really, really beautiful piece to have. So I think this is quite a hard deck to get now because I don't think it's available. Although, don't quote me, it may still be available, you know, on another website or something. But, you know, I don't keep up with these things enough to know. But I don't think it's available anymore. But essentially, it's supposed to be the closest possible version of the Rider Waite Smith to the 1909. You can see the line work is really beautiful. The colouring is actually quite similar, I think, to that original Universal Tarot deck that I showed you at the start, the first one I ever got. But the line work is much better. It's a, a slightly more muted in tone. I mean, that's just, that's gorgeous. For going into some of the old decks, of course, I love channels like Simon's at the Hermit's Cave and Grant Moon Baby, as well as the Cackling Moon. Um, there are some great videos there and some explorations on Water Child Tarot's channel as well. So yeah, I think maybe this is a deck that is a bit harder to find. 
also potentially now the Victorian Romantic Tarot from Baba Studios. This is the latest reprint and I adore it. It is gorgeous. Again, this was up there as like one of my most expensive. So it's got some extra cards inside here as well. I have the book as well. So these are the extra cards that I haven't shuffled into the deck at the moment because I've chosen the other versions. And there's the cover. The backs are beautiful. They've got this like gold foiling. Oh, it's just stunning. I wept when this deck arrived as well. So this is a little booklet. And then, yeah, this is the deck. It is just glorious. I absolutely adore it. There are walkthroughs of this on YouTube as well. So what is the most important lesson that Tara has taught me? I think there are a few. One of them being that things aren't always as they seem. There, there is nuance to everything. And it's also okay to change your mind and to find new ways of doing things and to refine your thoughts and evolve without failing or being wrong. I think these are lessons that learning tarot has taught me and practicing tarot has taught me. I feel like it also teaches you patience, um, dedication as well, and you know, patience when you're learning, patience with yourself. And it really helps to foster and cultivate self-love and nurture that, I think, in a person. So I really think there's so many things that Tara has taught me. And it's always teaching me, you know, every, every single reading, every single life experience is an opportunity for a lesson. So I really feel that that is reflected in the cards when I perform a reading and when I glean the wisdom from it. And there's something as well that people have discussed. Ronnie A.K. and Manuela from Place of Stillness Astrology have talked about this in the past as well, like the need for embodying a reading or the wisdom that comes from the reading, the need to actually bring that into your physical reality and actually make use of it to absorb the lesson and the knowledge and then, you know, move forward and make changes that you need to to change or, you know, purge, release, whatever needs to be removed, what no longer serves, what's toxic and what's holding you back. And I think that's really important as well. And I think that that's a really important lesson because I've noticed like in the past, I've done these readings and then the same topics, the same issues come up time and time again because actually whilst I'm listening, I might know this is a problem but I'm not then creating tangible physical steps to moving forward and actually embodying the lesson and making the changes that I need to do. So that is a big part of my practice now and when I am reading and you know using my moon spreads for that, you know for that deep reflective personal work that shadow work if you will yeah I think it's really really important so yeah so many lessons really really grateful for all of the lessons from the tarot and final question is tarot dinner party guests one guest of honor plus two other guests dead or alive so I think Simon said pixie and I would definitely have to agree with that I would love to have pixie and to discuss everything. I was really intrigued by the history about Pixie that she designed sets for theatre. Coming from a theatre background, you know, I used to go to drama school and dance school and it was a massive part of my life. I almost went to drama school actually. I got a few places and I decided against it. I took a gap year and went to university instead. I took theatre studies but it was an academic course and I did a dissertation and it was much more sort of theoretical and practical based and then I could have gone on to do acting after that but I decided not to. I instead went into journalism and writing for magazines in London about fashion and beauty and celebrities and home and lifestyle and things like that. So that's the path I took. To be honest, I don't think I was cut out to be an actor because I couldn't deal with the rejection. That was hard. So yeah, but I'm fascinated with that. And Richard Longman Tarot actually talked about that in, I think it was one of the Tarathons the year before last maybe, but that was a really, really good and interesting exploration. So definitely Pixie, I'd love to pick her brains. I really would be intrigued to meet Arthur Edward White as well as Alistair Crowley actually, but I'm not so sure they'd be wonderful dinner guests. So probably not going to mention them, but yeah, I would be interested to talk to them definitely. So their potentials. I think potentially if I was more of a thoth girl, I might wish to have someone like Lon Milo Duquette instead of Alistair Crowley. And then maybe I'd be able to sort of pick his brains a little bit more and understand more. That would be good. But because again, I'm not really a thoth girl, that doesn't feel quite right either. I think I could learn so much from so many people who are both dead and alive, to be honest. But names like Liz Dean come to mind. 
and Joan Bunning, Kim Huggins, Mary Kay Greer, Rachel Pollock. Um, my favourite book on tarot is 78 Degrees of Wisdom. I think Benabel Wen as well would be incredible to have. I think I would have to have Benabel Wen. Yeah, so let's say Pixie, Benabel Wen, and maybe Lady Frida Harris actually. Yeah, I think that would be cool because I would love to discover more about the Thoth and I feel like Alistair Crowley is just not the person that I would want at my dinner party, so I, I just, I don't know why. Yeah, I think maybe uh, Lady Frida Harris, Pixie and Bedeva Wen, that would make for a really interesting conversation, but definitely, I mean, I think I probably would have said Rachel Pollock before, but I know Simon said that and I know that a lot of people would probably feel like that, so, you know, if I could have more guess then I definitely would have Rachel Pollock because yeah just incredible yeah there are so many people who have just created fascinating decks and amazing books and I love reading about tarot and learning more about tarot and exploring tarot decks and obviously I'm here so you know that's very clear I think that that's a good decision because Lady Frida Harris's artwork is just incredible as well so yeah that took me a while to get to that decision but there we are and that's the last prompt. So I'm gonna say thank you so much for joining me. That brings me to the end of the video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any responses as well in the comments box below if you don't have a channel of your own. If you have a channel and you're doing a VR, I'd love to hear about it because I wanna see them all. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you are new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed or you've been watching my content for a while and you've not yet subscribed, please do subscribe and hit the bell notification because that way you'll find out when I upload new content about witchcraft, tarot, magic, spirituality, and all related topics. Like the video and share, of course. And if you'd like to come and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, I'm sharing more content there. I also have a Patreon page where I'm sharing some exclusive Book of Shadows pages as well as being a Discord and full forecast for the full and new moons along with ritual ideas and herbs and crystals that you can work with and also a PDF of my tarot spread that I create for each lunation which is specific to the lunation so talking about the different planets that are moving in the skies and are at play in that lunation so really really great for shadow work, for journaling, for tarot prompts uh, that is something I'm offering on the Patreon as well. So do come over and support me there. Or if you'd like to make a one-off donation, I have a buy me a coffee page or a direct PayPal link below. Or you can also send me a super thanks below as well. So all of that is so appreciated. And also just being here, making it to the end. If you did make it to the end of the video, please leave me a little moon emoji. Any of the moon emojis would be amazing. And I really, really hope that you stay well and safe. Thank you again so much for joining me. Take care of yourselves. And I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.